professional wildlife and wedding photographer, I take literally thousands of photographs each year. And no matter how careful I am with my settings, it's inevitable that I occasionally miss focus or my subject moves unexpectedly, presenting me with an unacceptable soft or blurry image. And it's a real pain to recover detail in what may be a vital shot. And over the years, I've tried many tools and spent countless hours making the corrections needed to turn imperfect images into perfectly usable images. Today, I'm going to share with you a sharpening tool that corrects pretty much all of my soft or blurry images with just one click of my mouse. Yes, that's right, one click. So keep watching as I process two images in Photoshop in real time using the incredible Topaz Sharpen AI. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. I'm super excited to share this amazing time-saving tool with you. I'm not going to waste time describing it to you when I can demonstrate it to you in real time. So let's open a couple of images so you can see for yourself. So let's open this image up in Topaz. As you can see, uh, it takes a few seconds to come in, but immediately when it comes in, you'll notice in the bottom left here, it's already updating, it's already working for you. And it's examining the image pixel by pixel and looking for the best way to actually make it look as sharp as possible. What you'll notice over on this side, there are several sharpened models. There's nine in total, actually, and each of those gives a different effect. So if you're not sure of which one to choose, you can actually go through them one by one. It'll render them, bring them in, and you can select which one that you think is the most appropriate. There is other ways to do this. There are several viewing options as well. If you look at the option at the top here, you have the original button. That shows you the before and the after, the before and the after. Now, looking at this, you know, on the motion blur normal mode, it looks about right to me. So we may have just hit the jackpot there without any further processing to have an image that we're very, very happy with already. However, let's just look through some of the controls here. So you have the split view here and you can swing back and forwards and see as much or as little of the image as you want to, to compare the sharpened area from the area out of focus. This other one here is a side-by-side -side view. I better warn you here that what will happen now is if you do a side-by-side -side view, we, it will render again and it's showing an update on the bottom. Keep an eye on the bottom because on, on some of these models it will re-render. So that's done now and you can see quite clearly that there is a marked improvement in motion blur normal model. There is something else here we can use which is great if you're just not sure which one you should use. And that is the comparison view. And what happens here is out of the nine models, it will show four of them side by side so you can compare which one you prefer. It takes a little while to come in here as each one is rendered individually, but it's worth waiting. And if there's one of the models there that you don't see, because obviously there's nine models and there's only four panels, you just need to click on the panel that you don't like and then you can replace it with another one that isn't shown so that you can actually see side by side the effect on each image. Now for me I've already spotted that normal motion blur is really going to be the one for me. So I'm actually going to go back to my single view. It's still under the normal motion blur. It is re-rendering. Whilst it's doing that I shall tell you that there's some other adjustments you can make down here. The remove blur and the suppress noise which is like a, a fine adjustment. And at the bottom here post-processing you can add grain. We all know that adding grain can help to sharpen up your image. So that's another option open to you. Because this works in a slightly different way from other uh, kind of sharpening tools. Because where the other sharpening tools find an edge and refine it and make it pixel sharper and more defined, this examines the entire image and replaces and improves the pixels to give us a result that you can see in front of you there, which I think is outstanding. The other thing that you might find is that it affects the background. Sometimes when you do sharpening, obviously you're sharpening the whole image, so you may well find that the background is affected adversely. So what you need to do then, and this is an amazing bit of kit, you click on the select tool, open it up, and already it has done a rough mask to mask out the background. We go on there to the refine, and it shows you there that basically it shows you the area that it's going to be applying the sharpen to. What you'll see there, the mask is not quite perfect at the top, so what you can do there is add sharpening by taking this little tool up here and just finishing off the mask. 
And I'm quite happy with that. It's a rough mask. I don't believe it needs to be absolutely on the edges because it is never likely to be blown up to this, this size. Unless you're going to do something for a, a shop or a, something where it's going to be blown up to life size. If you just wanted to sharpen the background, you can click on invert. And what that will do is it will sharpen only the background and leave the original image as it is. But of course, we want the subject to be sharp so we leave it like that the bottom here there's some adjustments here for the overlay uh, you can change the color and the opacity but that is stunning now as far as i'm concerned that image is done yep it's ready to go it will be taken into photoshop and i can continue processing doing anything i want to use that as a usable image let's go back from here cancel out and go back to the other image this is a photograph that I took of this young lady. This is at a wedding. Didn't quite hit the, the focusing, as you can see. I'm not going to go into a great detail. I'm just going to simply quickly show you how we can put that right. So we go to sharpen again. We bring it in. Program fires up. And here we can move it down and adjust it. And again, it's working immediately. It's actually coming in as motion blur, very blurry here. And that may or may not work uh, on this particular image. As you get more experience with this, you'll understand that you think maybe one of these are not appropriate. Uh, so you actually swap another one of the uh, the models to make a better job of it. However, there is another tool you can use here. I'm going to quickly show that as well. And that is you can do an auto mode. And this will suggest uh, the actual model that you should use to get the best results. It is just rendering there. It's not a perfect solution because it doesn't always get it right and in fact you know it's actually not bad on this but to be honest that's not quite sharp enough for me so I would then go back and change it to another one and I'm going to go for what I see and I see an image blurry and out of focus so let's try this particular rendering on this model uh, how this affects the image and see whether that's more acceptable to us it takes a few seconds, as I say, to render. That's the only kind of minor negative, is that it's doing so much work in the background fixing the pixels that it can take a little while to pop back in again. But there you can see immediately that that has worked. The original, the one that's been fixed. Hope you can see that. That is quite incredible. That is a workable image now. That's a, a saved image. It might have been an important one. Not in this case, but had that been an important wedding picture, that has just saved my bacon. So you can see this is an extraordinary tool giving you a very little work to do an awful lot of processing and to get a great result. Again, I'll be very, very surprised if you weren't deeply impressed at uh, this particular tool. So there you go. The fastest sharpening tool on the market. It's so easy to use. Anyone can get great results in the first few minutes of use. No tutorials needed. I need to point out I am not associated with Topaz in any way. I'm not an affiliate nor receiving any payment for this recommendation. But it's not only me that's showering praise on Topaz. Both my professional and amateur colleagues are universally describing it as the best on the market. Use the link in the description below to download Sharpener AI as a standalone app or as a plugin for Windows or Mac. The license allows you to download to two devices, plus you can switch your license to any other device, provided you remove it from one of the other two devices already in use. Now you can download a 30-day free trial, and if you decide to buy, you get a year's free updates. However, your copy of Sharpener Pro is yours forever. So I strongly recommend you give it a try, and you'll find out exactly why Topaz Sharpener AI is causing so much excitement in the photography world. Now, in my last video, I featured another amazing tool from Topaz, Topaz Denoise AI. So check it out by using the link at the end of this video. And my next video takes a look at the third and possibly my favourite Topaz tool, Topaz Gigapixel AI. I use this to improve and enlarge my images and you'll be amazed at what effect it has, even on images I'd already considered finished. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on tips and advice that could take your photography to another level. See you next time on the Better Photography Channel.